Good morning, everyone. My name is um, Ilaria Di Pietro, and it's a pleasure to be here today to talk about the state of the art and archaeological applicability of a portable luminescence dating instrument developed by Alma Sistemi, an Italian business with experience in R&D projects. Which is the rationale behind our instrument? First, there is no offer for a portable instrument to analyze samples in situ using luminescence. Moreover, to date, all the measurements using uh, luminescence are carried out in uh, specialized laboratories with a lead time for a response between 3 and 12 months. Secondly, uh, luminescence can determine absolute ages up to 1 million years, whereas carbonium-14 and uranium-thorium methods are limited to 50k years, and in any case, can, carbonium-14 cannot be used in the absence of uh, organic material. It also provides age estimation on a linear calendar timescale in contrast with other methods like uncalibrated radiocarbon data. And last but not least, compared to other current techniques, it's an inexpensive and expedition dating tool that can produce uh, new self-standing chronological data, but also pre-screening and uh, be being a decision-making tool to select the samples and to scout the most promising sites for further analysis. These are the reasons why, in the framework of uh, In Time, an Horizon 2020 project funded by the European uh, Union, we developed this miniaturized instrument that is currently TRL5, uh, and it, uh, it has been validated in a relevant environment. However, we intend to achieve the TRL9 in the next future, meaning the actual system will be proven in an operational uh, environment. Nowadays, luminescence and radiocarbon are the most commonly used methods for archaeological dating and are complementary each other, as you can see from the table. Black dots uh, indicate fully uh, employability of the technique for a specific material, uh, whereas um, partial filled dots indicated the need to be complemented by other techniques or source of information. Uh, but we need to keep in mind that this complementarity is true up to 50k, 50K years because radiocarbon cannot be deeper, while luminescence goes up to 1 million years. Here, just another comparison between the two dating methods. We already saw how deep they go in time. Moreover, uh, luminescence uses few grains of materials, works on sediments, rocks, pottery, and indirectly on archaeological material. It's less expensive and, in our case, requires a small facility while uh, radiocarbon uses a variable quantity of material depending on the type of samples, works on organ organic content only, analyzes uh, directly the archaeological material, it's more expensive and requires a larger scale facility. Our instrument is able to perform both thermally stimulated luminescence and optically stimulated luminescence methods. The former dates uh, the last heating event the target has been subject to, the latter one uh, dates the time of their last exposure to the light in the past. As you can see from the table, luminescence can be applied to a lot of artifacts, rocks and sediments. Um, depending on the material, both uh, thermoluminescent and, uh, and the optical stimulated luminescence can be applied on the same target. To give you an example, an example a brick can be dated with both uh, TL and OSL to check the time of its manufacture, but we can date the, the time of the emplacement uh, or construction, etc., analyze the surface among one brick and the other, but using only the OSL. A quick rundown of famous examples to which luminescence gave good results and consistent results. Blombos Caves, uh, South Africa. The layers containing the engraved hawkers were dated as um, 77 
thousand years old by thermoluminescence uh, of uh, burning uh, lithics. The terracotta Chinese army uh, where pottery shards and baked soil were dated using thermoluminescence and the obtained results are consistent with carbonium-14 dates made on uh, charcoal samples. Another example is the Roman camp of Lomba do Muro, the largest Roman military fortified enclosure in Galicia and northern Portugal. Uh, this is another example where the optical simulated luminescence worked well. The results of the absolute dating of the enclosure stone wall places uh, its foundation around the second century before Christ. But going back to our instrument, uh, how is it equipped? On the left, uh, an exploded uh, view drawing shows the assembly of all its parts. We have an X-ray tube, a photomultiplier, a camera, an infrared thermocouple, light uh, emitting diodes, and um, an air uh, cooling system. Uh, on the on the right, instead. Uh, we have a real picture of the assembled instrument without the transportation box with the, and with the electronic board opened to be fully, fully viewed. Both quartz and feldspar are uh, commonly used for luminescence dating, so we developed the instrument to address samples with both mineral contents. And hence, it has uh, high quantum uh, efficiency in the main peaks of emission of these two minerals. Uh, on the right, uh, our results are shown compared and matching to the related uh, literature ones. The, um, the instrument was validated using uh, laboratory reference results at and um, thanks to the Luminescence Lab at the University of Sassari, Italy. And on a side note, uh, in the exploded view on the left, the cover box that was not shown uh, before is here present. Our major competitors are the RISU of the Technical University of Denmark and the one by the German Freiburg instrument. Both of these readers are suitable for use in laboratory, although um, performance are similar what's new and different in our instrument um, first it has lower weight five kilogram versus 40 50 kilo, kilograms at minimum it has also it is also smaller in size and has a lower power consumption uh, moreover there is no need to have uh, liquid nitrogen since the cooling system is done by air cooling pumps uh, eventually, the presence of an X-ray tube instead of a radioactive source means that it can be used safely in the field and also in laboratories that are not certified uh, and equipped to manage radioactive sources. In conclusion, chronology of material is uh, of great importance for archaeology. There are several well-known and established techniques to date artifacts and events. Among the others, luminescence goes deeper in time and provides age estimation on a linear timescale. It is also precautionary for archaeological materials since uh, it requires much smaller quantity of samples and also offers the opportunity to perform absolute dating, not analyzing archaeological artifacts directly and ends in a destructive way, but rather investigating the materials surrounding them. Uh, eventually, our luminescence instrument has the plus value of being portable. It has similar performances than other competitors, but reduces the weight and size. It is shielded and the source is not radioactive, thus it can be used without any risk. It may also be used as a, an expensive uh, dating tool producing uh, new data, but also for pre-screening and decision-making to select samples to be further analyzed in situ. It has also to be considered that when talking about archaeological artifacts or site samples, it's not always possible to move them from the sites to the laboratory because regulation, law, and transfer permits. So um, having an instrument 
working in situ is uh, a certainly um, a good asset for archaeological application. And this is uh, another pro of our instrument. Well, this brings me to the end of my presentation. Um, I thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoy it. Please send me an email if you have any question about it or you want to talk about it. Goodbye, everyone, and thanks uh, again for your time.